Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is go over all of these clues. Most of them uh, you guys saw on the Venn diagram activity. There were a couple that were not on there, including the first one that says are gained or lost to form ions. And it says either page 119 or your notes will help you find the answer. What are gained or lost to form ions? Electrons. And electrons only. Okay. So place a check by electrons. Guys, when atoms undergo chemical reactions, the only things that are gained or lost or moved around are electrons. Nothing happens to anything in the nucleus. Remember, the nucleus contains protons and neutrons. So nothing is going to happen to the number of protons or neutrons. By the way, if you're in the back and it's hard for you to see because my screen is sadly kind of itty bitty, you're welcome to move up as long as you don't create a disruption. All right, the next clue says subatomic particle that identifies the element. Which one is that, guys? Protons, and only protons. It is only protons that identify the element. The number of neutrons doesn't matter as far as identifying the element. The number of electrons doesn't matter. Only protons. Subatomic particle that determines isotopes of an element. Neutrons, very good. Okay, so here's the way this works. If an atom has six protons, it is an atom of carbon. That is the end of the discussion because that's the only thing that matters to make it carbon is six protons. Most of the time, atoms of carbon also have six neutrons, but not all the time. Sometimes they have seven neutrons, maybe eight neutrons, okay? Those are different varieties or different isotopes of the atom carbon. It's carbon because they all have six protons, but they're different varieties because the number of neutrons has changed. Has everybody got that? All right. Um, found in the nucleus. Protons and neutrons. Positively charged particle. Protons only. Subatomic particle or subatomic particles that are charged. Electrons. Electrons have a negative charge. And what else? Protons, which have a positive charge. So protons and electrons. Neutrons have no charge whatsoever. All right, contains almost all the mass of an atom. Protons and neutrons. Basically, the mass of the atom is contained in the nucleus, and the nucleus has protons and neutrons in it. Subatomic particle responsible for an element's chemical behavior. The electrons, only electrons determine chemical behavior. What do you mean, Ms. Goff, by chemical behavior? Meaning, like, is that atom going to undergo chemical reactions? Is it going to form bonds with things? Okay, so it's going to be electrons that determine that. Subatomic particles that have a mass of 1U or 1AMU. Protons and neutrons, not electrons. Protons and neutrons have a mass of 1 AMU. Ms. Goff, why don't we measure in grams or something else that we're used to? Because if I measured subatomic particles in grams, I would come up with such a crazy small number that it really doesn't even make sense to talk about it, OK? Um, take your hat off just simply because you've got people behind you. Oh. Yeah, and it's hard to see around your hats, especially when they're big. Thank you. OK. Um, all right, so has a mass of 1U. We're going to say protons and neutrons have a mass of one atomic mass unit. Chemists decided, you know what, these subatomic particles are so small that we need their, you know, they need their own unit because it doesn't make sense to talk about them in grams or whatever. OK? So has a mass of 1U. That's protons and neutrons. Is a subatomic particle. All of them. They are all subatomic particles. 
located in the electron cloud. Gee, why is it called the electron cloud? Because it contains electrons. Has no charge. Neutrons. Neutrons are neutral. No charge. The number of these is the same as the atomic number. Protons. Only protons. All right. Used to calculate mass number. Protons and neutrons. Why not electrons? Because they have almost no mass, which is the answer to the next question. So we use protons and neutrons to calculate the mass of an atom. We do not use electrons because they have almost no mass. Discovered by James Chadwick in 1932, neutrons. Discovered by J.J. Thompson, electrons. Discovered by Ernest Rutherford, protons. Very good. Has a negative charge, electrons is not used in calculating mass number. Electrons. Again, why do we not use electrons? They have almost no mass. Two atoms are the same element if they have the same number of these. Protons. Are we good? All right, go to the notes that I gave you. All right, so now we're on this page of notes and um, most of this is typed out in small teeny weeny little letters but let's go over this if you've ever been on a seesaw you sit on one end somebody else sits on the other end who sinks the heavier person okay and the lighter person goes to the top of the seesaw all right so here's your little subatomic particle seesaw Notice we have a neutron on this side and a proton on this side, and the seesaw is even, which means neither one is heavier. They have the same mass. So protons and neutrons have the same mass. What is their mass? One AMU, okay? Next illustration shows a proton sunk to the bottom because it is heavier than the little bitty electron on the other end of the seesaw. Now, it could be a proton or it could be a what? Ooh, proton and neutron would be the same mass. So either one of those. Protons and neutrons are much heavier than electrons. That's what the second illustration is showing you. Again, if you are too far away to see clearly, please move up. I see people who are not writing this in on this sheet of paper, and I don't understand why. Because you went over there and you picked up this sheet of paper, so you should be adding these notes. Okay, we're going to move it down, and we're going to look at the third uh, illustration. There we go. So the third illustration has the seesaw nice and even again. But in order to make it even, we had to stack 1,836 electrons on one side to balance out the mass of a proton. What did I add? Or one neutron. Because a proton and a neutron have basically the same mass. Okay? So it takes 1,836 electrons to equal the mass of just one proton. So we got that? Okay, we're going to move over here. We've got a illustration of an atom. And what the illustration is trying to show you is that you have a really, really small, dense nucleus which contains protons and neutrons. And that's where almost all of the mass of the atom is. And then it's surrounded by a really, really big volume that's honestly mostly empty space, but it's where the electrons are found kind of zipping around. So we've got the dense nucleus, 
which contains protons and neutrons. And then we have this big area around it that's the electron cloud. So the nucleus contains almost all of an atom's mass, but the electron cloud contains almost all of the matter, uh, almost all of the atom's volume. Okay. Okay. So right here, P positive just stands for protons because protons are what charge positive and the little n has a little zero behind uh, beside it what does that mean neutrons zero charge for neutrons so that stands for protons n with a little zero stands for neutrons if i was going to abbreviate electrons it would be a little e with what a negative sign because they are negatively charged 